Hey guys, Mr. Wiz here. It is time for us to start building another game. So last time we built a clicking game. This time we're going to build something that's called a chasing game. So if you're not familiar with that term, a chasing game is basically a simple style game where the player is chasing after an object and there are probably enemies on the screen that are also chasing after the player. A good example of this would be Pac-Man, where in Pac-Man, the main character, Pac-Man is chasing after all the little gems, little nuggets, sometimes food, right? And meanwhile, there are ghosts chasing after Pac-Man. That's the simple premise of a chasing game. So we're going to be building our own simple chasing game. Along the way, we are going to be using new blocks that we have never used before. So sit tight, get ready to learn some new, something new, and uh, let's get started. First things first, as always, make sure you are signed in and you see up here in the top corner the, your initials or your picture. Um, that way you know that your work is getting saved. And of course, it is a good idea when you're working on something larger, like a game like this, which is going to take a couple days, to also manually save. Don't trust that the auto-saving is always working, because then you might lose something that you, you know, worked hard on. All right, so I'm going to go over here to new projects. I'm going to create a new project. And just for now, I'm going to call it Chasing Game. Once I've built the game, I can change this name, of course, to match whatever I decide to call my game. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and create our player. So we're going to go to Sprites, My Sprite, and you can either design a player or grab one from the gallery. I'm just going to grab one from the gallery now. The nice thing is you can always grab something from the gallery now and then change it later, right? Because you can always go back into here and edit the image, change the size, change the colors, do all that later. A lot of times when I'm building games, I start off with just using things from the gallery just to make sure that my code works correctly. And then I go back later and I edit it. So for the first version of this game, I actually want to use two sprites, one to represent the player and one to represent the object that I'm going after, the um, goal, the prize, the food item, if you will. So I'm going to grab my two sprites and let's make the second one a food item. With that said, you may notice in here that some items there are different versions of. For instance, there's a hamburger here, but there's also a hamburger here that's much better detail. There's a pizza item here, but there's a better quality pizza, a ham, and a much better quality ham. The difference between these is the size. So if I go with the sm bad quality pizza here, I end up with a much smaller slice, and you'll see it right there. There it is. Or if I went for the better quality one, it uses more pixels, which means it's going to be much bigger. Here you can see the size is 32 by 32, and it is significantly larger than the other one, right? So for the sake of what I'm doing, since my character is small, I'm going to use one of the small food items as well. Um, let's do, you know, since I was talking about Pac-Man earlier, let's use cherries, because cherries are in Pac-Man. It's a little throwback there. All right, so I've got my Sprite and I've got my cherries. I am going to give it a background color instead of just black, just because it'll make my game a little bit easier to see everything. I don't like using the plain black background because then it's harder to see the outlines of the characters. I could go green if I wanted to make it look like grass or I could go with something else. Let's try yellow for now. I think yellow might look good for this game. Okay, so there we go. Now, of course, I do need to set my sprites positions. So I'm going to use, just like in the last video, position blocks here and make sure that the names match. So one of my characters is called my sprite. The one's called my sprite two. Now I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff with these characters. So you know what? I think now would be a good time for me to go ahead and change the names. To change the name of a sprite, if I click on it, there is the new variable option or there is the rename variable option. Since I'm already using it and it's already called my sprite in a couple of different parts of my code, renaming is going to be easier. So I'm going to rename this as um, player. Let's see if that works. Oh, it's not going to let me use player because it already exists as kind sprite. Okay, so let's use something other than player. Let's use, what should I call my character? Um, you know what? I'm going to call him Pac. Since we were just talking about Pac-Man a minute ago, this guy's name is now Pac. So I want you to notice that when I renamed it, the one down here that set the position also got changed. That's why I said if you're using a sprite already, renaming it's easier because it changes everywhere in the code where that variable was being used. So my sprite 2, I'm going to rename as Cherry. And there we go. So now I'm going to set the Pac's position and set the Cherry's position. So let's put the pack on this side of the screen. Let's put the cherry on this side of the screen. 
The exact numbers aren't important right now. So there they are. And then the goal is going to be that I'm going to run over and touch the food item to get a point. So before I can do that, I need to give my player some controls. Because right now, if I use the arrow keys, nothing's happening. Because nowhere in my code have I given it controls yet. So I got to go to controller section. I got to grab the move my sprite with buttons block. Now I'm going to get a quick error message here. Why do you think I just got that error message? Because it says move my sprite with buttons and there's nothing currently called my sprite. So I need to make sure I rename this to the sprite that I'm using. Pack is who I want to move with buttons. There we go. So now if I test my game and I use my arrow keys or the WASD keys, my character shouldn't move. Now when my character moves over and touches the cherry, nothing happens and that's okay because I haven't coded it to happen yet, right? So let's go ahead and code something to happen when they touch. This will be our first new block in this video that we haven't seen yet. So if you go to the Sprite section and you scroll down, there's an area here that says on Sprite of kind player overlap with other Sprite of kind player. We're gonna grab this and this is an event block. So you can put it anywhere in the code. It doesn't need to attach to the on start. It is its own separate thing. So how does this work? Where it says on Sprite of kind player overlaps with Sprite of kind player. Here's an important distinction. When you have different Sprites in your game, they should have different kinds. Pack is our player. The cherry is not. So I'm going to change where it says kind player for the cherry, and I'm going to change it to kind food. So typically when we're thinking about games, a food is like something that you would pick up, something you would get health or points or something like that with, right? So I'm changing the cherry to a kind food. So then with my overlap code, when a sprite of kind player overlaps with another sprite of kind food. There we go. So now I've got my code for what to do when they touch. So now when the player touches the cherry, something is going to happen. Now what happens is going to be up to me and what I decide to put inside this block. So we mentioned that I want to get a point. So let's go to info and let's grab a change score by one. So now when the player touches the food, they should get one point. So let's take a look at what happens. Walk over, I touch the food and I'm getting points. I'm getting a lot of points, pretty much an infinite number of points as long as I'm sitting here. Why do you suppose that's happening? I only told the code to give me one point when I touch the food. So why am I getting so many points? Let's think about that. The code said, when player overlaps with food, get a point. So the player right now, he's still overlapping with the food. If you look at the screen, the player and the food are still touching. If I walk away from the cherry, the points stop. If I walk up to the cherry, the points go on forever. That's why I have an infinite number of points here is because I'm still touching the food. If I only want to get the points one time, then I'm going to need to change what happens when the player touches the food so that they're not still touching. All right, so here we go. How do I do this? When the player overlaps with food, change score by one, but then I want to move the cherry. So I'm going to grab a set position block again. And I'm going to move the cherry so he's no longer touching the um, so he's no longer touching the player. All right, so I got the little error message again because there's no sprite currently called my sprite. So let's change this to cherry. And where do I want the cherry to go when I touch it? All right, so here is where I'm going to show you guys something kind of interesting. If I just pick a position, if I just pick a random position here then that will work great for the first time I touch the food because I touched it and it moved, right? But what happens if when I go touch the food the second time? I go back to the infinite point loop. Why is that happening? My code says that when you touch the food item, it's going to move it to that position. It's already in that position. So it is moving it to the same position it's already in. I'm still touching it. I'm getting infinite points. So rather than give it a specific position like I did here, what I really need to do is give it a random position. So it's not always in the same spot and it can go anywhere on the screen. So this is where we're going to use randomness, a new block for us again. I'm going to go to the math section and I'm going to scroll down to where it says pick random. So it says pick random zero to 10. And I'm going to put this inside the X 
but then I'm going to duplicate it and also put it inside of the Y. So I'm going to give the cherry a random position. Now, what numbers should I use for this random position? Remember again, how I keep telling you to make sure you remember the size of the screen. This is a situation we're going to want to, going to, want to know the size of the screen, right? So how wide is that screen? Do you guys remember? It is 160 pixels wide. The size of the make code screen is 160 pixels wide. And that is our X direction. So for our X, it's going to randomly pick a number between 0 and 160. Then our Y, which is our up-down direction. Do you guys remember what the height of the screen was? It was 120. So we're going to use a random from 0 to 120. Now, when I touch the cherry, it will randomly appear anywhere from 0, which is the far left corner, to so 160, which is the far right side. And it will appear anywhere from 0 on the top to 120 on the bottom. So literally anywhere on the screen, this cherry could appear when I touch it. There it goes. There it goes again. And I've got a nice little beginning of a game here. I'm getting points. Everything looks good. All right. So now let's just make a couple of edits to make this game a little bit cleaner. And then I think we'll be done with the video. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to change the starting position of the player and the cherry. I just kind of eyeballed these numbers, but let's make it more fair. Um, what if I had randomness built into this too? So let's duplicate the random blocks and let's use them for these as well. So I'm picking random numbers for where the player and the food are going to start on the screen. So now when the game starts, oh, let me move my picture out of the way. When the game starts, they could be anywhere on the screen. See how every time I'm refreshing, they're having a new random position. And then I can go and I can collect them and we can get the points. Okay, now if I want to make this an actual game right now, there's no challenge, right? I can kind of play this forever. Oh, where'd the cherry go? It must be hiding behind the number. Yeah, there it was. <laughs> if you don't like using the full, the full distance, keep in mind, you can always lower them if you want to. For instance, sometimes people, rather than using the full 160, you might want to only use 150. You might want to do 10 less, right? So doing 10 to 150 will give you a little bit of a border there. You can do the same thing here with using 10 and 110. That will help prevent it from being mostly off the screen, right? Because if you have it go all the way, when the fruit appears, half the fruit's gonna be off the screen anyways, you won't be able to see it. So giving yourself a little bit of room here, this 10 pixel edge that I just gave myself, will make it a little bit easier to prevent that from happening. Okay, so as I was saying, there's no real challenge right now, because um, I can kind of play forever uh, there's, with no reason not to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a countdown to make this game just a little bit harder. So at the on start, we're gonna go ahead and throw a countdown in there, start countdown. And of course you can set whatever time you want to. I'll just leave it at 10 for now. So now I've got 10 seconds to get the uh, fruit, get as much fruit as possible. But of course I'm still missing a very important thing. I'm missing sound effects, right? So I should go ahead and add sound effects to this. When do you think it would make the most sense for sounds to be in this game? probably when I'm getting the point, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a sound effect in here and I'm gonna do it in background because remember why I told you guys in the clicker game, until done can actually slow down your game. So we're gonna use in background. So let's check it out now. Yep. And I have the beginning of a pretty good little chasing game here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video now. In the next part, we will add enemies and get a little bit more creative with this. So before I close everything, let's make sure my work is saved. If I look down here, I do see the check mark in the cloud, which means that it should have auto saved my work. But just to be on the safe side, I'm also going to click the manual save button just to make sure that none of my work got lost. 
Um, auto save is a great function, but every once in a while it doesn't work the way you want it to, right? So a manual save on something you're going to spend a few days on is always a good idea. All right. So I hope you learned something new today. If you learned something new, um, we did talk about a few new things. We talked about the overlap codes. We talked about randomness. So if any of that was new for you, please hit that like button to show your support. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about this website so they can build some fun games as well. I'll see you next time, and we'll add some more stuff to our chasing games. All right. Bye.